So the ball is thrown vertically upward. We know from ground level, we got a function that relates basically to its height right here. And for the first question, we want to find how long will it take to reach its maximum height. So how long we're talking about an aspect of time, right? And if we go back to our checklist and we talk about an object reaching a maximum height, we're looking at a point in time where that object is changing direction. So the velocity of that object would have to be zero. That means I take my derivative here, take my derivative of the provided function. That derivative would be negative 32t plus 96. I appreciate that the derivative represents velocity. trying to figure out this moment in time where this object reaches its maximum height. I know it's going to have to change direction, so velocity would be zero. If I take my derivative and I set it equal to zero and solve for t, that'll give me that moment in time that I'm looking for. So solving for t here. Works out pretty nicely, right? T equals 3. So in terms of units of measurement here, it really doesn't factor into the wording of this question, does it? But if we threw something on there, you know, we could say T equals, probably would make sense to say 3 seconds, right, if we slapped a unit of measurement on there. But if we're looking for how long, we're looking for the time, so we've got a time here for part A. Now, for part B, Part B asks, how high will the ball go? So how high is a matter of distance? We're talking a matter of distance. That means we want to go back. We want to make a connection to the original function. As far as how high it's going to go, we need to know the moment in time it's reaching that maximum height. Of course, we know that moment in time. We found it right here. So we're going to take our time of three we say seconds. We're going to plug back into that original function. Place t with 3. And if we calculate that out, because the original function has to do with the object's position, we should know its height. So if we calculate that out, let's see, I got 256, which again, if we have a unit of measurement here, based on the way the question is worded, that'd be 256 feet. All right, part C. Part C is another how long question. So it's again asking for some kind of time. How long will it take the ball to hit the ground. Well, when the ball hits the ground, what's true about the height of this ball? It's going to be zero. So since the original function has to do with the height of the ball, we're going to let the original function be equal to zero. Part C, how long will it take the ball to hit the ground? We take negative 16t squared plus 96t, plus 112, we set that equal to 0, and we solve for t. Um, to do this, well, there's a variety of ways we could do it. could use the quadratic formula or do some factoring. There is a greatest common factor here. We could take out a negative 16. If you take out a negative 16, that leaves you with t squared. Uh, I'd be minus 16, and this would be minus, should be 7, yeah, 7. That equals 0, which point looks like we have something we could factor a little bit further, right? At that greatest common factor of negative 16 in the front, we could break up the resulting quadratic of t squared minus 16 minus 7. If we break that up, we get t minus 7 and t plus 1. 
Okay, now we're taking all of our factors, setting all our factors equal to zero and solving. Obviously, negative 16, we can drop out of this because it doesn't have a t. If I take these two factors set equal to zero and solve, I find that time is going to equal from the first factor, 7, and from the second factor, negative 1. Now you've got to use some common sense on these problems. You've got to take answers that make sense. So in terms of time, we're not traveling back in time. We'll take the negative 1 out. And if we're using seconds as a unit of measurement, we'd say seven seconds is when this object hits the ground. So D, if you look at that one, kind of serves as a follow-up question. How fast will the ball be going? So how fast something's going, that connects to velocity. We need a time for this object when it hits the ground. And obviously, we got that here in part C. So we're going to take seven. Talking about velocity, we're going to plug into the derivative. So finding at this point, it'd be s prime of 7, or since it's velocity, you could say v of 7, right? What was our derivative back here? Our derivative back here was negative 32t plus 96. So it would be negative 32t is 7 plus 96. Calculate that one out. What's that come out to be? It comes out to be negative 128. So if we let time be in terms of seconds and we let our uh, positioning be in terms of feet, velocity here would be negative 128 feet per second. 